they said uh, they stopped playing immediately. So the Prophet said, What's the matter? They said, Oh Prophet of Allah, if you are with them, how are we gonna win? So then the Prophet said, I'm with you all. So there's many other incidents where Prophet encouraged the Sahaba and he played with them himself. And then not only that, not only playing, but he always encouraged and encouraged and advised Sahaba and he was always motivating them to work, to find work. It says a young Sahabi came to Prophet and he asked him for help. The Prophet said, that the Sadaqah charity is not allowed on a ghani and then someone who's uh, very good, uh, well nourished and then everything is good with him. <coughs> and then there's another hadith and he was very kind in teaching the Sahaba the matters of deen. There's another hadith mentioned uh, uh, in the books of hadith that the Sahabi, young Sahabi, when in the beginning of Islam, it was permissible to speak and talk in, while performing salah. So one of the Sahabi came to uh, uh, performing salah, while performing salah, <coughs> somebody sneezed. So he said, Allah. So other Sahaba got a little bit upset and they said, you know, Mahma, stop it, what are you doing? So he got even more angry because he didn't know the, 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 the disorder of Allah came. So he even said that, you know, what, that why are you looking at me? Why are you staring at me? So Sahaba got even more upset with this, uh, you know, and then they got angry at him. But he said to Sahabi that I restrained myself and I sat down and I didn't speak. And he said after the Salah, uh, uh, the Sahaba told me that the order of Allah came and that we are not allowed to speak anymore in Salah, so you shouldn't have sneezed. So the Sahabi got scared, you know, that the Prophet is now going to be a little bit mad at me. And the Sahaba were looking at the Prophet that he's going to maybe a little bit upset at the Sahabi, young Sahabi. But he says, the Sahabi mentioned that I was sitting scared. But he said, as soon as Prophet concluded his Salah, as soon as he concluded his, his Salah, the Prophet وسلم, he said, the Sahabi said, Fabi Abi wa Ummi. I never seen anybody more better teacher, more better instructor than the Prophet He did not say anything, he didn't demean me, he didn't insult me, he didn't say anything. He didn't beat me up, he didn't say anything bad to me. Instead, only, the only thing that he told me was that from now on, it's not permissible in Salah to speak other than the zikr of Allah in the Quran, recitation of the Quran. Didn't do anything, and he was a young Sahabi. So very kind with the Sahaba. And the other narration, Anas radiallahu ta'ala mentioned that I saw Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in 10 years. He never said to me once that how you should, you should have done like this, or you should have done it like this, or if you had done it like this, it would have been like this. Nothing, never, nothing like this. And he, he says that the, some of the time, the Azbar al said something like this, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped them. And then not only Muslims, boys and teenagers were attracted to him. The Jewish boy, there's an incident in Bukhari, which I mentioned last time, was uh, used to come to the company of Prophet Islam and used to serve him. And then he accepted Islam. There is many, many, many other stories. One of the stories of Zayd ibn Haritha, radiallahu ta'ala, a young sahabi, and he was a servant of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa very closely, living with him in his house. The regular recipient of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's kindness and humbleness. So he it said that when he was young, his father came to emancipate him, to free him. So he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he told him, Oh Prophet of Allah, I want to free my son and I want to pay for him, you know, and I want to take him back. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, okay, well, you know, then he said to Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu ta'ala, now you choose between, between your father or me. If you want to go, go, inshallah, no problem. And if you want to stay with me, stay with me. So look at this, young Sahabi, young Sahabi, he says, immediately he says in the narration, without any hesitation, without any hesitation, this boy says, uh, no, I will not go with you, I will instead live with the Prophet Sallallahu because I have seen kindness and graciousness and mercy with this man that I have not seen with anyone else and I would rather stay with him than go anywhere else. And then he said that when he died, the Prophet Sallallahu said, I love him so much uh, when he died and he used to miss him. And then there was another, uh, <coughs> and then not only that, but he used to worry and advise Sahab and the, in terms of their maternity. He would ask them, you are married, not married, and in this hadith, he was advising them you know, about getting married. And not only that, but there was a, a story that one of the Sahabi was young and he was not very nice looking. So Prophet was worried about his marriage. So one of the Sahabi, Ansari Sahabi of very, uh, you know, uh, good status came to Prophet and presented his daughter to Rasulullah. 
But Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam agreed. But he said, not for me, but another Sahabi. And he mentioned Julayb radhiyallahu anhu. This Sahabi, they say, was very poor, not very nice looking. And and when the Sahabi heard this, so he got a little bit upset, and he said, okay, let me, you know, ask uh, the interior ministry, go out and ask my wife. So he went to his wife, uh, and his wife, when she heard this, and she was like, you know, out, out of all of the people in Medina, the person that Prophet Sallallahu found for my daughter is Julay. Uh, not very nice looking, the guy who's living on the street, very poor, and then we have not accepted this person, and this person proposal, and we have not, not, not accepted this person proposal, and now we have to accept Julay. She said, no, we're not going to marry uh, our daughter with Julay. So the daughter heard, and she said, no, I will marry this person, because the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it. And she married him. And this Sahabi, he, he got married to her. And a few days later, he participated in a battle, and then he got martyred. And he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the battle, he started asking people, you know, are you missing anybody? The Sahaba said, we are missing so and so. And then he asked them again, are you missing someone else? They mentioned, enough to go fulan and fulan, and we are missing such and such. And then he asked the third time. Then the Sahaba said, we are missing, you know, some, you know, this person. The third time the Prophet وسلم, said, but I'm missing Julaik, the guy I just got married recently. I'm missing him, where is he? He came with us. The Sahaba then found him under some of the Uffah who uh, got killed. They found him under him. So they said, the Prophet وسلم, they made dua for him, and he dug his grave, and he laid him down in the grave himself, and he made dua for him, for the Sahabi, that nobody took care of him, nobody cared about him, was not very nice looking. He got him married, and he took care of him all his life, and he was a young Sahabi. There is another story mentioned, uh, very, very important, mentioned in the, in the books of Hadith, and this te Hadith teaches a very important lesson in terms of how we can you know, improve ourselves, that we all have teenagers maybe, or maybe we have a small younger brother with us, or maybe we can we are uh, doing something or interacting somehow with the young people. We can learn so much from this hadith. The Prophet is mentioning uh, Imam Ahmad by Imam radiallahu ta'ala. A sahabi, young sahabi came to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very young sahabi. In the masjid of Nabi, was, uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with the sahaba and he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that allow me to commit zina. He said, allow me to fornicate. In the majlis, in the masjid al Nabawi, where all the Sahaba were sitting and he's asking the most holy of all the people, the Prophet وسلم, allow me to commit zina. This, this uh, young man. So the Sahaba, other Sahaba got really upset, you know what, you, you know, vulgarity in the masjid, the most holiest man, the most holy of all the places, obscenity, you know, what kind of man, you know, so they stopped him. The Prophet وسلم, look at the teaching and how he trained and how he interacted, how he treated. He said, no, leave him, leave him, leave him. He said, come. He told this guy, young man, come close to me. And then, Fadana Amin Huqarib, and the hadith mentioned this guy, got really close to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not to beat him up, and not to tell him, okay, let me call your, brother, your father or somebody else so I can complain about you. No. He got him close to him. And then he, this guy came to close to him. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, this guy, so whatever you're asking me that you want to fornicate, you want to com uh, commit zina, atuhibbuhu li ummi. Would you like somebody come and zina to your mom? This guy said, no, Ya Rasulullah, how can I uh, like it? No, Wallahi, la, Wallahi, jala, jala, Allah, fida, I cannot allow this. And then he asked him, do you, would you like if somebody come and zina to your sister? He said, no, obviously not. And then he said, your aunt, your wife, you know, and he gave him examples. And he said, no. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not only that, but he said, you know, that the people also like what you do not like for your wife, your sister, your mother, your aunt, people do not like the same thing with their wives and their sisters and their uh, mothers. And they said, the Prophet ﷺ, he put his hand on his blessed hand on him, on this young man. And he said, Allah forgive his sins, and purify and cleanse his heart, and protect his chastity. And the Sahabi said after that incident, I had never had any bad thought in my mind because of the dua of Rasulullah So from this hadith we learned that the Prophet not only, not only conveyed the message of Allah, not only taught him you know, what is allowed and what is not allowed in Sharia, what is not permissible, he did not only tell him, okay, no, it's not allowed in our Sharia. No, but he convinced him, he gave him example, parallels, you know, that you know, if you, somebody does this to your wife, your sister, 
and he convinced him and that is morally also wrong what you're asking me to do and then not only that he showed him mercy and kindness he got him he told him to come close to him and he made dua for him very good dua the sahabi of allah and mentioned that uh, the effect of this dua that no ill thought ever came to my mind again and then that's why because of this Rasulullah is spending so much time with the Sahaba, most of the being that came to us is because of the Sahaba, young Sahaba, seven of them, very young. They said, Muhaddisin mentioned, most of the hadith that we have today that we practice upon are from seven Sahaba. All of them when Sahaba, when the, our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, were between the ages of 20 and 30. All of them, seven of them. And they mentioned most of the deen to us that we practice today. A poet said very beautifully, Sab'un min al-sahabi fawqa alfi qad nabalu min al-hadithi an al-mukhtari khayr al-mudari Abu Hurairat al-Sa'adun Jabirun Anasun Siddiqatun Ibn Abbasin Tada Ibn Umar Sayyidun Abu Sahaba Abu Hurairat Sa'id Abu Sa'id al-Khudri Jabir Ibn Abdullah Anasun Ibn Malik Aisha Radiallahu Anha Abdullah Ibn Abbas Abdullah Ibn Abbas All of them at the time of the demise of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent so much time with them they learned so much that all of them mentioned, narrated over a thousand hadiths, Abu Huraira, five thousand hadiths uh, in the books of the hadith, and we learned those hadiths, we practice from those hadiths, the young Sahaba, Rabbanullah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you a tawfiq to learn from the seer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and practice as much as possible. Hadha wa makana min, wa makana fiha min sawabi fa min Allahi wa ahda wa makana min sahbi na khatim wa lisyan fa min yu min shaytan. Wallahu wa rasuluhu min hubara wa a'udhu billahi an zakkirakum bihi wa ansah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabihi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.